So today we're gonna talk about the top 10 hottest singles in your area. No, <laughs> the top 10 best stocks of 2023 from the S&P 500 index. But speaking of the hottest singles, you gotta see this. This is uh, NSFW, not really, but check this out. This is a January 1975 edition of the Playboy magazine in Braille. Now you've probably seen that kid on TikTok who's like, Damn. I gotta say, that's funny. It made me laugh, but the history behind this magazine is so much more interesting than you could ever imagine. Believe it or not, these magazines were funded by the Library of Congress. That's right, the US government paid $103,000 a year to print 1,012 month subscriptions per year. And that's roughly $836,000 in today's money adjusted for inflation. Now during the 70s, you could actually call your local library and be like, good morning operator. I'd like me one of those magazines for educational purposes, of course. And they would ship it to you for free. It became the sixth most popular magazine, but there was a twist because none of the pages in this book actually described any risque images. Instead, publications like this one featured influential people like presidential candidates, business news, and the civil rights movement. That was one of the ways that the visually impaired got access to their information. But then, in the 1980s, the US got a lot more conservative. Senators like Matt Mattingly argued that we shouldn't be frivolously spending money on magazines that promote licit and illicit activities, especially when we have a $200 billion budget deficit. Now in that photo, hilariously to his left, is someone who might look familiar to you. Now I don't know if he's unhappy about the deficit or that they're trying to take away his magazines. I think, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's young Joe Biden if there ever was such a thing. I forgot what this video is about. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to foot him. Uh, foot, foot. Oh, that's right. The top 10 hottest stonks in your area of 2023. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the history lesson. Now, before I share with you the best stocks, I just want you to remember that the S&P 500 index, that's the stock market, is supposed to go up 8 to 10% per year on average. That's what it's done. So anytime you see numbers that are higher than that, it's really impressive. And some of these numbers are about to blow your mind. Also, a shout out to Bankrate for providing a lot of this information. But here are the top five most widely held stocks. These are the most popular stocks that you probably have in your portfolio. The most popular stock was Apple. The second most popular was Microsoft. Number three was Google. Number four was Amazon. And the fifth most popular stock this year was Tesla. Now, 99% of the people watching this video probably have one of these stocks in their portfolio, either as part of an index fund, an ETF, or an individual stock. But now let me break down the top 10 best performing stocks of the S&P 500 in 2023 so far. Coming in at number 10, kind of surprising, is GE. Now a year ago, someone on Reddit posted a question if they should buy General Electric stock. And the top comment in response was someone saying they wouldn't touch GE with a 10-foot pole. And that's why we should never take advice from Reddit or YouTube for that matter. Now GE is from the industrial sector, which usually doesn't do crazy numbers, but they did have a great year. They spent $800 million on share buybacks in the first three quarters. And while they're not exactly considered a dividend stock company, they did pay $501 million in dividends to shareholders. And that's why it's up almost 90% this year. Coming in at number nine is ticker symbol CRM, which is Salesforce. Now CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management, and it's a piece of software that a lot of companies from the S&P 500 use to keep track of their customer relationships, their data, and the information, which is all on the cloud, so that different teams from the same company can all be on the same page. In other words, I have no idea what they actually do. But a year ago, a Reddit post said that shares of Salesforce were down 50% and that it was massively overvalued and they wouldn't buy it. The stock went up 93% because of course it did. Increased profits and a dedication to cost cutting is ultimately what sealed the deal as they gained more market share. Coming in at number eight is ticker symbol AMD or Advanced Micro Devices. It's another tech company that creates computer processors and graphics chips, which I personally don't know much about, but I do know about something called Moore's Law, which states that computing power doubles every two years or so. And that's because we can fit more transistors on a single microchip 
doubling its effective power. Unfortunately though, common theory says that we have about 10 years left of this law before we can't fit any more smaller transistors and we'll reach a peak of what's possible for GPUs. But also, not everyone agrees. Either way, I'm not smart enough to figure any of it out, but I can tell you that so far, AMD has gone up 110% this year. Now next up on the list, coming in at number seven is Tesla, or as Jay Leno likes to call them, Tesla. Now I love Tesla, but I also think Tesla's more than just a stock. It's also kind of a religion. There's entire blogs and YouTube channels dedicated to predicting Tesla's next move and how much the stock will be worth. And while no one knows for sure what's gonna happen to Tesla stock in the future, I can say they've had an insane year with the rollout of the Cybertruck, the full self-driving software, the price cuts, and because I live in the future, the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates in 2024, which is also why Tesla's stock has gone up 113%. And coming in at number six is another tech stock, ticker symbol PANW, which is Palo Alto Networks. And if you've never heard of them before, it's a cybersecurity company that builds next-gen firewalls and protection systems for other corporations. And don't worry, I had no idea either. But their stock is up a massive 117%. And according to Reddit, their stock is gonna crash spectacularly. So that means all in on Palo Alto Networks. Now the fifth best stock so far this year has been ticker symbol PHM or Pulte Group. It's a consumer discretionary company that buys land and builds houses. Now I think it's fair to say that most people thought the housing market wouldn't be doing all that great in 2023 with the interest rates being as high as they are. And that turned out to be true if you were the average real estate agent who had a hard time buying and selling houses. But if you were one of the few people that bet on the housing shortage, and the companies that could potentially solve that problem, then you were rewarded with 120% returns since the start of the year. Sometimes it just pays to be a contrarian, but coming in at number four is ticker symbol CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines, which if you remember, the cruise line stocks had some of the craziest stories because during the pandemic, Carnival Cruise Lines plummeted from $42 down to $8 a share. No one was going on vacations, so in order to survive, they had to borrow money. They went from having a $9.7 billion debt at the start of the pandemic to a peak of $36 billion. And somehow they managed to survive and they're slowly paying off their debt. So far, Carnival Cruise Lines went up 126% this year. And the reason, because Reddit armchair experts said it was time to sell. The debt was just too high for their liking. Makes me think of Jim Carrey for some reason. Take care now, bye bye then. Moving on to number three is CCL's not so distant cousin, RCL, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line stock, which is same, same, but different. If you thought that Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines would disappear because of their crushing debt and that they were burning 80,000 gallons of diesel per ship per day at a time when oil prices were going up, you'd probably be on Reddit. And you'd also be horribly wrong because that stock went up 142%. Bon voyage to your gains, sir. Now, number two on this list is Meta. After Facebook spent billions of dollars into becoming the metaverse company, people thought the company was becoming too risky and they would continue to burn cash. But just like always, people got zucked into the narrative. Because after Meta laid off thousands of workers, they continued to be insanely profitable and that's why this year they're up 172%. And coming in at number one on this list, the company that made the most for their investors from the S&P 500 is ticker symbol NVIDIA also pronounced NVIDIA. NVIDIA actually believes that crypto adds nothing of value to society, but they do profit from selling mining chips. And that's really super smart because NVIDIA's strategy is, we'll sell you the shovels and you can dig for gold. But for a lot of investors, NVIDIA represents a cost-effective way to get invested into artificial intelligence because NVIDIA produces a lot of the chips that companies use for their generative AI. And that's also why the share growth of NVIDIA dwarfed everything in the S&P 500 and the stock is up 230%. And if you're thinking of investing your money into NVIDIA yourself, please do your own research and definitely check what Reddit thinks. Hey, they could actually be right this time. And for all the nerds that are still here watching this video, here's a list of the worst performing stocks from the S&P 500. And the list includes Illumina, Moderna, FMC, Enphase, and Solar Edge Technologies. Now, if you take anything away from this entire video, please let it be this next part. Think of the stock market like a Las Vegas casino. And I should know because I live in Vegas, but all the games within a casino will give the edge to the house. 
Some games will do this less, some games will do it more. A game like Blackjack, for example, gives the house only half a percent advantage. And the worst game, which is Kino, gives 20 to 40% advantage to the house. Now, if picking individual stocks was on the list that I just showed you, it would give the house a 75% advantage. And that's because a study by McKinsey estimates that 75% of companies within the index will disappear by 2027. They'll either be bought out, they'll merge with another company, or they'll go bankrupt. The life expectancy of companies is actually shortening. And to explain why, I have to channel my inner Neil deGrasse Tyson. Think of the stock market like a universe that's full of galaxies and black holes. Black holes are merging and are bumping into each other, becoming bigger and bigger, and they eat other black holes. And the bigger they get, the faster they consume. That's how the stock market works too. Uh, Mr. Neal, this is a Wendy's. Now Amazon is arguably one of the biggest black holes that exist in the market today because it tries to consume everything it touches, making it really hard for the smaller companies to survive. So if you pick an individual stock today, there's a 75% chance that it will eventually fail. So then the question is, should you just never invest at all because the stock market is a giant casino that's doomed to fail? Some people seem to think so, but that's because they don't know the secret. The secret is that if you buy my course down below, <laughs> just kidding, I don't sell a course yet. The secret is that in 1976, a man by the name of John Bogle changed the casino's rules by giving a small edge to the player instead of the casino. Now he did that by creating an index that would represent the top 500 companies. So by owning this one stock ETF, it would give us access to the best 500 stocks, which would automatically replace themselves within the index if they ever became not the best 500 without us needing to do anything. And what changed the odds forever in our favor is this. The bet was simple. Instead of trying to figure out which game was the best for the player to play, instead it said, let's bet on the casino to win in the long term. That's all the S&P 500 does. It makes a bet that if you believe the US economy will continue growing in the long term, you will win. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going all in on Bitcoin. I hope you got some value out of this. As always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below. Go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.